Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Connor Valley Church Online. Oh, guys, the service has started. Oh, whoops. Oh, goodness. Um, right, we're going to be doing the announcements, but uh, first of all, let's have a bit of a catch up. Guys, how are we doing? How are we coming with lockdown? Um, yeah, not too bad. Um, I think I've lost my head a bit. I've, I've grown this. Oh, a bit closer. Oh, lovely. It's, Laura, it's a bit, yeah, it's about 80s football. Uh, Laura, out of 10, what do you reckon? Mm, 8, 9.5? A four? Oh. Yeah. A four? Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sam basically is not going well, is the answer. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Law? Any better? Yeah, I washed my hair and blow dried it for the first time in six weeks. Six <laughs> weeks. And, wow. and it looks lovely. Uh, you know, and on the flip side, I haven't had a shower in a week. So I think it's fair to say we're all sort of dealing with this in different ways, but we won't discuss too much on that. Some, one. some worse but, than others. Yeah, some worse than others. But we won't say who. We don't know who. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, I mean, let's, let's crack straight on to the arts, because I think, before any of my personal hygiene can be <laughs> why, why do you think we can kick us off? Yeah, so after this service uh, today, um, on this uh, live message, we will have a Q&A after the session. Uh, me and Sam thought we'd try something new this week. Um, yep. So we'll probably give you two minutes after the sermon finishes. Uh, it'll come straight back on this video. Um, it'll be discussion, chats. A bit more informal about you know the preach the talk uh, maybe q and a's so if while you're listening you have some questions that you want to unpack think them in your head write them down and we can try and answer them afterwards um just a sort of a space more informal space for us to chat through for some things it's great yeah looking forward to it so as simon says have a thing write the questions down or any comments or thing you have and we're going to give some space for that afterwards we're looking forward to it don't grill us too hard um the, so then that's after this sermon straight away, that's Sunday. Then on Monday, so that's literally tomorrow at 12 to 1, I'm starting something called Lunchtime Learning. Now we're going to basically, I want to just create a space where some of us, whoever's free during that time, can get together and do a bit more intentional Bible study. We're going to be oh. using um, a company called The Bible Project, sort of outline and Bible study. So if you're free then, it's going to be on Zoom. Uh, the code will go out on Facebook. So come on down, 12 to 1 on a Monday lunchtime when we're going to do some stuff together. Sounds lovely. Uh, also on a Monday then at three o'clock, we have open spaces. So Sam did the, uh, the first one last week and it's just a place for us all just to meet together, have a catch up and just, it's not even for just people from the church, for the whole community, you know, anyone who wants to join, come and join us at 3 p.m. And the call will be put on Facebook on Monday. Come on, that's good, yeah. And, you know, that's the way we want to support in terms of if you're feeling isolated. But in other ways, as a church, we'd love to support. You know, if you need prescriptions picked up, if you need shopping, if you can't go out and you need something that we can assist you with, whatever it may be, please get in touch with us as a church. We would love to help in any way possible. And you'd get us three coming and helping you out. What more could you want? Well, it's, it's, it's the dream, Simon. Do you know what I mean? It's the dream. And I promise I'll shower if I do come to your house. <laughs> um, the last thing, guys, is uh, something to, for um, some of the members of the church or, or if you're a very generous visitor, um, we do something called tithing or giving tithes. And that's where we actually give some of our finance back to the church. That's that's an act of sacrifice back to God. Uh, and uh, But during this time, a lot, a lot of people haven't been able to do that. And some people have been saying, oh, how do I do it? How could I do it, you know, online? There's this amazing new app. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's spelled G-I-V-T. Give to, I think we're going with. Give, give, give to. Us. Give to us, we're going with. Uh, and basically, all you have to do is download that app from the App Store, type in your details, and then scan this barcode, which I'm or not barcode, QR code, so behind the times, QR code just behind here, just below there. And uh, basically, if when you scan that, it'll do everything else for you. It'll go straight to our bank account. We're all set up on that. And that's just for you guys. If you want to and can give financially, that will just bless the, the church so much. If you can't, no worries. We're not here for your money. We love you. But if you would like to give, that is how it's going to happen. Um, guys, uh, I think we're done. I think we smashed it. Yeah. Smash it out. So we, uh, should we crack on with what we were doing beforehand? Yeah, I think we should go back to the work that we've been doing for the last six weeks. Yeah, important work, isn't it? Yeah, that's good. So, what are you thinking? Is it FIFA or Call of Duty? <laughs> I don't mind. I'll smash you anything, son. Let's do it. I'll follow you guys. Okay? Come on, let's do it. Right. Okay.
Hello and welcome guys to another Cunnam Valley Church online service. My name's Sam Johnson, I'm the pastor at Cunnam Valley Church. It is such a privilege to have you. Thank you so much for taking your time out of your day to be with us here online. I'm going to be talking probably for about 20-25 minutes on a topic that God's just really been sort of bringing to my heart and, and, and speaking to me about. So I hope it speaks to you as well. So before we begin, let's just pray and give this time over to Jesus. Uh, Father, we just thank you so much that you are here, Father, that you are present with us. Even though we are in so many different locations, you are with us. Your Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And God, you give us all we need to face today. So, Father, I just uh, pray that as we, uh, as we hear your word, God, that we, our hearts will be ready to receive it. That it wouldn't be about me, it wouldn't be about anything else. It would just all be about you and what you want to say to us. In your name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Guys, well, let me um, ask you, do, do you have right now, in fact, you can probably stick it in the comments, uh, a goal or a dream or something that you're like, you want to achieve and you're trying and trying and trying. Uh, maybe you're not there yet. And in fact, you know, very few of us are exactly at our dreams or our goals, but there's something that you're working towards. It might be a hobby, it might be a, you know, an, an instrument, it might be, you know, just trying to get better at a skill uh, developing a business, something like that, is there something that you're working on right now, you have a dream or a goal, and you're putting in your finance, your energy, your time, all in to this thing. If you do, stick it in the comments now. I'd love to see what some of us are working towards or what some of the goals that we have in our lives. Um, for me, it's, uh, it is and will always be sport. I love sport. If you know me, you know that fact. You know, I have, I'm a big Aston Villa fan. I've got an Aston Villa scarf on my windowsill uh, at church. Uh, in fact, that was the answer to a quiz question quite recently. Um, you know, I absolutely love it. But, but that, that, that is a, there is a specific thing about that. I love sports that I can play well. And not just play well, but play well pretty quickly after I've started. I am not good at starting a sport I am not good at and just pushing through. So football, I was pretty good for, as, as a footballer uh, from, from the beginning and I've just grown on that and I love it. You know, basketball, I was pretty pretty good at and, and got into very quickly. Uh, golf, you know, it's a difficult game, but I was, you know, decent at it. My dad used to take me from a young age and so I was pretty decent at playing golf, but i got some funny stories about three sports that I've tried, only one of them I'm still playing. Uh, and it's because if I suck at something, I really hate pushing through for absolutely no enjoyment whatsoever. So the first one is cricket. I remember I was probably 14 in a school game. It was the first time I'd ever played for a cricket team. I wasn't that good. Loads of my mates were a lot better. And um, I was the last person to bat. And I'm thinking, OK, I could really make a name for myself here. And some of the lads probably know I'm not that great and start talking to me and start putting bets on me. Start you know, saying, Sam, up, I'll give you a fiver if you hit a six. If you hit the ball out the boundary without it touching the floor, I'll give you a fiver. And I'm thinking, I'm 14. That's like 500 penny sweets. I'm laughing here. Is that right? Yeah, that is right. Uh, you know, and, and then someone else, goes, yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a five. I'll get, suddenly I'm up to like 40 quid here of saying, if I hit this ball for a six, I'm off to the races. Um, you know, so I go in, I'm, you know, I don't have my own pads, I'm borrowing pads, I'm borrowing everything. I get up into the crease, you know, it's the, it's the like fourth or fifth rate bowler and I'm in front of the wickets and um, in front of the stump, sorry. And this first ball comes fairly slow, slightly swinging. I just go for it, completely miss, smack out the stumps, out for a golden duck, out for zero, no runs. As quick as I walked on, I trudged back off and it was a terrible moment. All my mates laughing and very happy that they don't have to give me a fiver. Um, so that was not enjoyable. The second one was skateboarding. I am not a skateboarder. My brother-in-law is a skateboarder. He's a very good skateboarder. But me, I, I'm just not. And I got myself a skateboard from some, I can't remember, I think it was like a kid's skateboard. It was the right size, but it wasn't strong enough. And, and, um, and then at my youth group, they used to have a skate park there. And they have a half pipe, which is it's got two banking, two curves, and you stand at the top and you like to do something where you, where you drop in. And you have to lean down to the skateboard and head down into the ramp and go up and down the ramp. 
And I was not ready to do this. I could barely push and stand on this skateboard, right? But I get in and some people are like, yeah, go for it. Apparently I'm a class clown. People just tell me to do something and I do it. Um, and I get on top of this this half pipe and I'm standing there. No one really told me how to do it. I just knew I had to push forward and assume I would just land on the wheels and go. And as I go forward, um, the skateboard shoots from outside my legs. If my legs are like that, the skateboard goes this way. This leg bends that way. This leg bends that way. And I buckle, smack the floor, and, and I really badly damage my knee. And I get up, and I promise you, to this day, I have not touched a skateboard since. I think I was about 15 or 16. I haven't touched one since, in a decade, because of that one moment. I do not push through. The third one is darts. Now, darts, I'm actually average at darts, but the issue is, the people that got me into darts are my brother-in-law and my father-in-law. My father-in-law played for Wales in the 80s. He's on YouTube. Uh, Martin Thomas, you can check him out. My brother-in-law, Reese, who plays Super League. And I'm, I'm calling it, he's going to play internationally. Uh, and and so I've got these people, and Martin is such a natural, my father-in-law, that he just says, just pick up a dart and throw. And I pick up a dart and throw, and I'm missing the board. Like, it's bad. And I'm thinking, oh, i just give this up. But actually, you credit to myself a little bit, I've pushed on, I'm getting a little bit better, I've hit a few 180s. And I'm getting there. But as a standard rule, I do not persevere or push through things that I am not good at. And the thing is, we've all got different relationships with perseverance, right? For me in sport, it doesn't go together well. For you, you might just be someone that just goes for things. You might start off baking. The first 10 cakes are burnt to a crisp. The next 10 are still runny. They've got soggy bottoms, as Mary Berry would say. You know, you, you just keep going, but you just keep going. And now you're, you're a star baker. You're unbelievable. You know, whether maybe it's a, you're a drawer or an artist, and you love doing and it's like, you, but you were rubbish at the start, but you just pushed on. Others of us, we're just like, nah, scrap this. I'm out. I'm not doing it. And But the thing is, to get good at something, you need this thing called perseverance. I've said the word a couple of times, perseverance. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Perseverance. See, this guy called Malcolm Gladwell, he wrote a book called 10,000 Hours, and he claims that if you... Uh, give intentional 10,000 hours of practice to any one task, you will master it. You will have it nailed on. I gave skateboarding seven hours and I'm out. I'm done. I'm not very good, so I'm done. And so we all have to grow and, 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 and face things with perseverance, right? And, you know, I've said some, some hobbies, some things like that, but actually in a bit more serious tone, maybe family relationships take perseverance. Maybe your marriage takes perseverance. Do you know what? During this lockdown, you might be here watching this video right now and life might feel like you are just persevering to get to the end of the day. You are just pushing through to get to the end of the day. Boredom is setting in. You're feeling down. Maybe you're feeling depressed or anxious. And life feels like you're just pushing through. And the idea that, that, that our society has given is that perseverance gets you to your dream goal, your dream place, your desired outcome, whatever that is, whether it's mastery of a skill, whether it's a nice big house, whether it's a comfortable paycheck, um, the world and society has told us, hey, just persevere, just get through this horrible boggy patch, and I promise you, there are fields of daisies coming. Um, you know, and as I came to prepare this message, uh, I was probably going to go with a, the, a message of going, do you know what, push through, push through, get to the end and, and it'll be wonderful. And actually, as I started to read this text, I started to understand, because perseverance is a biblical topic, it's, it's spoken about in, in much of the Bible. I started realising that, that maybe that wasn't exactly what the biblical text and the biblical writers were getting at. Maybe just getting through things and then the end goal is lovely is all it's all about. And so we're reading and... Um, because, I mean, you have to remember when Paul is writing, the Apostle Paul, to some of these churches in the New Testament, he's writing letters. During some of these times, uh, Christians were being killed in Colosseums. They were being fed to lions as, as game, as fair game. Uh, and so he, he calls people to perseverance, to, to persevere, to push through, to keep on going. And as I've studied, I think I've come to this where I feel happy to settle on. And what I'd like to suggest to you today is the fact that in God's eyes perseverance is not the vehicle to get you to a destination perseverance is the destination it's not the journey perseverance is the destination not 
the journey. If you're writing notes, get that down. Perseverance is the destination, not the journey. Now, we're going to read from James 1, because of course we've got to go back to the Bible to get what I'm talking about. I hope I'm not just talking rubbish. In fact, I believe I'm not. So if you've got a Bible, turn to James 1. Um, It's one of my favourite verses. As a church, we went through a Bible study recently through James. And and James is, is the brother of Jesus. He's writing to uh, the scattered believers, the believers were there. Uh, then the, the the leader of of uh, I believe Rome at the time basically scattered the believers, started to persecute them, and the, and the believers just had to flee. And all of a sudden, they, you were used to being a community, and suddenly they're all apart, and they're li- they're fearing for their lives. And James uh, starts this in the second verse. He says this: Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. There's that word. So let perseverance finish its work in you so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You see, God's desire is not that we would learn to persevere through the times to get us to this glorious end goal. He's not saying, oh, just just push on through. God's desire is actually... Uh, that 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 we would that that we would be shaped and molded, and that He uses the circumstances we go through to develop in us perseverance as the end goal. Notice in this, it doesn't say, "Oh, you know, uh, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials, uh, because you know when the testing of faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work in you, so that you may mature and complete, and then life's going to be fantastic, and you're going to get that thing you wished for." That's not what it says. Merely it says, let perseverance finish his work in you so that you may be mature and complete. Maturity and completeness comes in the attainment, comes in the growth of perseverance. Not just getting through, not just plowing through something and waiting and hoping for that dream job, hoping for that dream paycheck, hoping for that dream car, hoping for that dream relationship or marriage. Perseverance is part of God's end goal for you and for me as believers. And that might sound a bit horrible, but actually there are great things. There are fantastic things in in this essence. Because perseverance is growing you towards the end goal. I've got a couple more scriptures. Hebrews 6 says this. uh, For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, here you go, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. Notice you are inheriting God's promises, not your own plans or desires. Romans 5, 3 says this, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character and character that strengthens our confident hope of salvation and this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. God is calling us to be joyful, to be passionate, to be excited about perseverance, not as the vehicle to get us somewhere wonderful, but as the destination, the place that God wants us to be is in the midst and in a place of growing in perseverance, in having fullness of perseverance. You see, in in none of those verses, a a writer never says that you'll get your desired outcome. A writer never says, oh, do all this stuff and then God will just give you everything and life is awesome. I love to tell you that's what the Bible says, but it doesn't. Because do you know what? God is knows what's better for you and what God has in store for you is so much better. That Hebrews um, uh, verse says, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises. I promise you this, that God's promises are so much better than any desired outcome, any end goal that you have in place, any, uh, you know, green field out there that you think, oh, if I just trudge through this mud, I'm going to run through the daisies. That is not what life is. And that is not what God's plan is for you. He has something better than that. In reality, that lie, because that green field isn't coming. 
that green field isn't just, you know, life never just opens up into this oh, wonderful time. Uh, I, I love, uh, I saw something that I shared on my Facebook years, a couple of years ago actually, and it says, um, the grass is, prob is probably greener because the grass in the other field is fake. You know, the grass probably is greener elsewhere because the grass is fake. Uh, you know, we, you know, so many other people can put on such a, a wonderful idea of what life is like, but everyone goes through trouble, troubles, everyone goes through tribulations. And actually, if we develop in ourselves perseverance, that's where God wants us. God doesn't want us in that, that end zone, that, that final place of, of absolute bliss. He says, no, that's not coming until I come again or until you come and meet me. But whilst you're here on earth, grow in perseverance. See perseverance as the destination, not the journey. And maybe you're thinking, but 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 isn't God this good guy that wants me to have good things? You know, the, the Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God. So so where does that fall into things? Um, uh, but but I and, and as I've said that. It, I want to give you a New Testament and Old Testament example that, do you know what? God's plan might seem like a trudge or, or your life might seem like a trudge right now. But what God has for you is so much better. And even what God has for you here on earth might look horrific. It might look difficult. I'm going to give you some examples of that to prove that actually, some biblical examples to prove that your life here on earth, that perseverance is the end goal, not the destination. So the first one, the Old Testament example. I want you to think about, or let me tell you about the story of the Israelites very briefly. Uh, they are in captivity uh, and then they, uh, God sends 10 uh, plagues to, uh, on Pharaoh and on Egypt who are keeping the Israelites captive. And they let them go and they get out and there's this big story going through the Red Sea. There's, there's these incredible things and then they're journeying and they're journeying and they're trying to get to this place called the Promised Land. A place that God has blessed them for. But people continue, the people of Israel continue to question God, demand him, and they don't have faith in him. And so the Israelites wander through the desert for 40 years as God trains them in trust in him. You see, God is so much more, and we are so, we, sometimes we think God is so interested in the destination. Sometimes we think God is so interested in you getting to that place where you've got the perfect job, or getting to that, you know, growing your ministry to a certain size, or getting your bank balance to a certain place of security. But God, for even for his Israelites, made his people walk in the desert for 40 years. Why? Because he wanted them to grow in themselves into the people that he had designed them to be. God is so much more interested in you than he is in the destination. Why? Because he has the destination sorted. He has heaven ready for us to come down. He is ready for that. But whilst you are here on earth, forget about your desired destination. Forget about your desired outcome. Why? Because God's, uh, uh, the, God, the thing that we see as the vehicle, perseverance, pushing through, endurance, is actually the destination that God wants you to get to. Why? Because perseverance is the destination, not the journey. In fact, let me give you an example. And this is the old, the New Testament example. But let me give you an example of where God's incredible, incredible plan comes to pass. And then let me tell you if you think, oh, you know, God's got this perfect end goal, you know, here on this earth for us all. Hebrews 12, 1 says this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Now get this. This is God's glorious plan. Because of the joy awaiting him, Jesus, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honour beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Ladies and gentlemen, God's incredible plan sometimes here on earth will look crazy. It will look like a trudge. But can I promise you it is because... In, in eternity, he has the end goal all sorted. He has that incredible place set out for you. But whilst you're here on earth, his desire for you is not some end goal, some place of, of, of luxurious bliss. 
his goal for you, his destination for you, is to grow in endurance, to grow in perseverance. Why? Well, James tells us, because when you grow in perseverance, in fact, it's here, uh, you will be complete, mature, not lacking anything. What an incredible promise that God gives us, that he wants us to be mature and fulfilled and not lacking in anything. And we do that not by having a full bank balance. We do that not by having loads of wonderful friends. We do that not by having the perfect job, the perfect husband, the perfect wife. We do that by growing in perseverance, in growing in endurance, letting perseverance have its work in us, that we would be full and mature, not lacking in anything. So let me ask you this. Have you been wandering around the desert looking for that end goal when God wants you to take a moment and look at yourself? to grow and do something in you? Are you missing the whole point that of, of the journey that you're in right now? Whilst we stand in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, are you doing so much just to persevere, just to get through because you think the end goal is where God's taking you, when actually God wants you in the midst of this to grow you, to change you, to challenge you, to, to, to bring the true you out of yourself? What if we took a moment, every single one of us, each and every one of us, took this moment to go, God, I'm not going to just just look for the end, look for the end of the pandemic, look for the end of my money struggles, look for the end of my struggles with addiction. No, I'm going to stand in this moment and I'm going to say, God, would you have your way in me? Would you teach me endurance? Would you grow my perseverance that I would be mature and perfect and lacking in nothing? And I think that's where God is taking us. Why? Because perseverance is the destination not the journey. Let me tell you uh, one final scripture. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was talking about heaven and I said, God is more interested in getting heaven into you than you into heaven. And on the back of that, in linking in with this, James 1.12 says this, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Guys, we can be so focused in trying to sort our own destination, in trying to get everything ready so that it's all done. Can I tell you, God has the destination ready. God has the crown of life waiting for you in eternity. So what does he say for us to do here on earth? Does he say, keep just plough through all the horrible stuff and get to the good stuff? No. He says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation because they will receive the crown of life that God has promised. So guys, God will use everything he can to grow you into the person he is calling you to be. He is not looking for you to make plans and get yourself to that end goal, that, that desired outcome, that place of bliss. He's saying right now, right where you are, in the desert you're wandering around, grow patiently in endurance. Let my perseverance uh, finish its work in you that, we, that you would be complete, mature, lacking in nothing. So guys, I just want to take this moment. Maybe this has challenged you. Maybe this has encouraged you. I hope it's done a bit of both. To say, do you know what? Whatever I'm facing right now, it might feel like a desert. It might feel like I've got nowhere to go. It might feel like a trudge. But you know what? God has a plan for this very moment. He has a plan for this moment to say, I will grow my perseverance in you. So will you let him? Will you grow? Let him grow his perseverance in you. Uh, but, and, and we do that by keeping our eyes on Jesus, keeping the main thing, the main thing. Keep get, letting God give us the true perspective of what's going on. And ultimately, God, it, uh, guys, it is all built on the truth that waiting at the end, whenever that is, is God's crown of life that is promised to those who patiently endure and persevere. Uh, through these through these times on earth so guys if that's you today i want to pray for you i want to pray for in fact i want to pray for every single one of us that we would be people that don't just look to just trudge through the horrible stuff and, and get to the end because guys you will always be waiting you will always be just an arm's reach away from your desired outcome guys the reality is that god has called us to persevere not as the journey not as the vehicle to get us somewhere but as the destination. 
So let's pray together. Father, I just want to thank you so much that, uh, that you call us into perseverance. Thank you, God, that as you do that, as, as life hits, as we face difficulties, as sometimes for people it feels like a trudge, God, as we face those things, God, you don't just leave us. You don't say, I'll see you at the finish line. You say, I have a plan for you to grow you in endurance, to grow you in perseverance, that you would be complete and mature, that you would be lacking in nothing. Father, I pray in these moments that every single person listening today would take something in, would, would start to look around themselves, look at the very, this the very day, the very things they're struggling with right now and say, God, how could you grow me today? How could you change my heart? How could you stop me looking for the greener grass? And how could you let me invest in what's around me, invest in who you're creating me to be? That we would be mature, lacking in nothing. So Father, I pray for those who are in difficulty. I pray that you would give them peace, that you would give them strength, that you would give them the endurance and the perseverance and the willingness to strive on, to keep on keeping on, to keep on patiently enduring, because God, ultimately, we know that you have the end all sorted. You have, you know the beginning from the end and you have got the end waiting for us. We have a crown of life waiting for us. So Jesus, we declare today that we will patiently endure with you. Help us today, Lord Jesus. Bless us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and keep us safe in these bizarre times. In your name we pray. Amen. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in if you have uh, been challenged or encouraged by anything please leave it in the comments if you'd like uh, some support or some prayer please feel free to give the church a direct message it is i just want to say again thank you so much for tuning in have a great time guys stick around because as we said in the announcements we are going to be doing a q a on this very talk in about two minutes so go get yourself a cup of tea cup of coffee um get yourself a blanket uh, get t tucked in and we are just going to have a short time where we uh, do some Q&A where we, so me and Simon just discuss this sermon uh, and, and hopefully dig it a little deeper so that we can all grow on this journey together towards a fullness of perseverance. Guys, thank you so much and have a great day. See you in a couple of minutes. Hello there, folks. Uh, I hope you are doing well. Um, I hope you enjoyed that service. So here we are. We're going to start something new. Um, we're, uh, I, hope, I hope you enjoy that. Uh, basically, um, if you are on our Facebook page, any comment you type in right now, I can see. So what I really want to encourage you is to start writing questions, anything that you maybe were unsure of or anything you'd like clarification of or anything you'd like to us to go a bit deeper into the subject I've got Simon here on Skype. I'm about to bring him in in a couple of seconds. And we're basically just going to have a chat, have a catch up, um, talk about the preparation of the sermon. Uh, so please stick around. Um, obviously, if the kettle's boiling, go finish making a cup of tea. But come on back and get your questions in. And then we would love to start 
answering questions. Otherwise, me and Simon, well, we're good at nattering, so we'll just natter on for a couple of minutes. We don't really have a plan for how long this will take. Um, but Simon, why don't you um, why don't you come on in? Why Hello. Thank you, Laura, for saying that. The whole thing we've just done. No. Um, awesome. Thank you, Laura, for, for saying that. Um, I'll start again and just say, uh, great to see you. Um, if you've got any comments, please stick them in the comments section on Facebook. I can see them popping up. Um, and how embarrassing people are there going. They've been miming for things. Uh, <laughs> We just yeah, yeah. So please stick your questions, comments, anything you want to um, discuss or think about, please stick them in the comment section. Me and Simon are basically just going to chat. If you don't put any questions, guess what? We're just going to natter on for about 10 or 15 minutes. There's no real plan uh, as to how long this will take. Uh, we just really want to catch up and connect with you guys. We want it to be interactive, so please don't just... Um, sit there and do nothing but we're just here to um to have a great time and to catch up i was just asking you might have seen us lifting our legs in the air um my question to simon was are you wearing trousers obviously the whole thing with zoom is that you can only see the waist up and we did confirm we are both wearing trousers and then i confirmed i have had a shower recently we both showered which we, is a good thing. we we both showered mate which is great and simon the tash is um still doing well yeah i mean my family john and pete called it a caterpillar um not real slugs. I'm not really sure where to go with it, but well, think... if yours is a caterpillar, mate, mine is uh, a chameleon. <laughs> a chameleon. Yeah, you just can't. Where... It... <laughs> it's wearing camo. Yeah. Right. Let's jump in, mate. So, what do you think about the the message that I brought? That's a dangerous question. No, I thought I thought it was good. I think it changed my opinion on some bits, or it, it sort of challenged my view of what is valuable or what God actually wants to get. Yeah, you know yeah. what God's purpose is for us. You know, it's not always about this one end goal. I did laugh at the beginning when you talked about hate in sports. I thought I was crying in terms of why you know when you wouldn't play me at FIFA anymore when I lived with you. Yeah, we. I, I should explain this. Um, when I talk about not having great perseverance to do with sports, this this transfers onto Xbox. So when Simon lived with me for nine months, we played FIFA, and I actually had a better winning record against you. But when you beat me. I had severe meltdown, didn't I? <laughs> and basically, about six months in, I actually refused to play Simon because he started beating me. That's how bad it gets, guys. So, um, you know, God's still working in me too, so don't don't feel bad, is what I'm saying. I was laughing, you know, when uh, when I first went to your darts, when I played your first game with the darts and I missed the ball in my first throw, do you remember? Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. That was, was bad, so I've, I've had equally bad moments. But, um, I think, yeah, the first question, I guess, that I wanted to ask was, from a practical point of view for you, yeah. uh, what does like perseverance, you know, being the destination, not the journey, how does that look? Uh, we might be thinking, how does that look practically for you rather than from a Bible perspective that you live in it out? What does that look like? Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's the, the obvious one is um, the lockdown, you know, uh, is sitting in this place and going, I think we're so many of us are thinking, oh, great, you know, in X amount of time, it'll be over, it'll be done, we'll just be able to get through We'll just be able to carry on with our lives as if nothing ever happened. Um, and I just, I, I think for me, definitely God's saying, well, actually, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to have so much more time at home with my wife, at home with my, uh, with little Betsy. I'm going to have so much more time to read, to study, to spend time pastorally checking up on people. What is God, what does God want to grow in me? Uh, but also, um, you know, from an even more personal uh, sort of standpoint, my uh, uh, parenting with, with, with Betsy, you know, you know, she's had good nights and she's had bad nights. She's had good days and she's had bad days. And and in the bad days, you know, it can be so easy to just think, oh, you know, in when she's six months old, when she's a year old, we won't have this. But actually, my question is, what is God saying to me right now about how I can grow as a father? What is God saying to me right now? How can how can me growing in perseverance not just help me, not just make me look like a better Christian, but what positive effect could it have on my daughter? What can we? What positive effect could we have on? Um, you know, that Sean, who is my mother-in-law, has just said, can we see better? Um, <laughs> there's this cool feature, guys. You've got to be careful what you comment because I can stick your comment up on screen. So there we are. 
Sean Thomas saying, can we see Betsan? Let me uh, see. She might be asleep. She's asleep. She's, yeah, go get her. Oh, <laughs> my lovely assistant's going to bring my lovely daughter to, to the screen. There you are. That'd be the shame if she's on here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, Julia has asked, um, um, could you remind us of the Bible verses you mentioned earlier? I'm just going to get my notes up so that I don't get them wrong. Um, uh, but yeah, keep going. Simon, uh, anything that was said? Um, we need to make the most of lockdown, Julia said. Um, those of us who are stuck at home, absolutely. Right, here we are, my special guest. Why don't you come on in? Oh, Nia's on live on camera. Hello. Oh. Hello. Want to say hello to Julia? <laughs> so, She's beautiful. Yeah, in answer to your question, like, how can I be a better dad to this little beauty is is actually a, an act of perseverance. You're not in the screen there you are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't ready for that. Um, you know, and so it's it's the thing of, you know, I could so easily go, ah, oh, you know, look, when lockdown finished, I'll just be a better dad. We'll be able to go out. We'll be able to get support. But actually the reality is, is, you know, what, what can I do right now? How can I put my phone down and spend time with it? Or what's God growing me in? And for me, that's, that's a real challenge. Um, uh, and, and an encouragement as well, you know, we do have this time, God's blessed it to us, and so we, we get an opportunity to do the best. No, I, think, I think I agree, I think God's spoken to me a lot about, you know, being present, Yeah. because I think when you miss out, you can miss out on so much stuff that God's saying, or that we want to do, or even enjoying your life, because you're so busy thinking about the next thing, or, yeah. you know, I can't wait till next year, or that holiday, or and you just miss that whole period in between, where, you know, you're always searching for something else, and you miss out on the you know, the fun of in the now, like what's God? God is the destination. The problem is when you get to that, whatever perceived destination it is, there'll be another one that comes up, yeah. you know, and you just keep going and going. And so for me, God was like, just be present, like in the today, like definitely live in, live in the now, you know? Yeah, totally. I think that, that is it. You know, it, you know, perseverance takes living in the now. It takes in the face of a financial stress, in the face of emotional disaster even you know it takes us to go i'm going to choose to spend this time and take this moment just to register where i am register who i am in this moment register what god's doing in me uh, and then going forward uh, on that note i think uh, nikki said it'd be great to discuss ways uh, when enduring trials and when discouragement comes how can we encourage ourselves to persevere so in the face of that you know it's easy enough to say or do but when you're going through when you're bankrupt or when you're going through and you know you have fights with family and you don't know if you're going to see them again when you, you know when they're threatened with divorce or something you know those are really uh, difficult challenges so how can we encourage ourselves to persevere um i think th the first thing for me would be um get people around you if you are on your own and you are just encouraging yourself uh we're just going to get stuck we just we we f we are we are broken humans right doesn't matter if you're a pastor doesn't matter if you're the top of society, lowest of society, we all struggle. And so we need to have people around us that when we feel like, I can't do this, and they go, no, 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 you can. You know, whatever you're doing, we'll stand with you. And, you know, and that, that's why I say the first thing. Yeah, and for me, I think, for me, it's probably the ideal, the not the knowing that God is actually with you in it. Yeah. And that God, God cares more about getting you out of it than we do. Yeah. Like sometimes I think when we're praying, we're trying to twist God's arm. To, to help us you know where it's actually God's desperate to help us and support us and love us through you know I was thinking about Psalm you know Psalm 23 this morning you know even when I walk through the darkest valley I will not be afraid for your close beside me your rod and your staff protect and comfort me yeah and you know the idea that I always pray for God to get me out of situations you know and get frustrated with puzzling quickly yeah. whereas as you know as we've been learning today it's not about that always about that but Sometimes it's about growing character or sometimes it's about drawing near to God and relying on him and not actually being able to rely on our own strength and things get difficult. Yeah. I think for me, it's, that's when, if I'm going through a difficult time, it's I actually come close to God because I realise I can't do these things on my own. Yeah, yeah. So in that way, it's a it's a positive time in terms of our relationship going going forward. But it is difficult, isn't it? We don't, it's not easy. That doesn't make it, sometimes doesn't make it that much easier because they still exist. It doesn't get rid of the problem, but at least you know you've got support. I totally, and I think it's, oh, we, you know, you, we've got to say that it's okay not to find things easy. It's okay to find perseverance difficult. You know, um, there are, you know, the story, what, read the Psalms, you've read, you've read from one of them just there. It's David going up and down and up and down and going, I'm, oh, great, God, you're wonderful. And then, God, where are you? You've ignored me. And, oh, how am I going to get through this? And, oh, God, you're so faithful. You know, it's okay to take those moments. There's, 
it's developing that practice of going back to God. Um, in in a book uh, called How's Your Soul? In fact, I've got it here. Um, it's by my favourite preacher uh, called Judah Smith, and basically it's just um, a question about um, uh, looking at actually how are you on the inside, like uh, how are you really doing within yourself? How's your soul? And he says. Uh, when God says, you know, hope is that anchor for the soul, he says, when, when God says, you know, he's our anchor, uh, so many of us think, oh, he'll get us out of situation. When actually think of what an anchor is, an anchor holds you firm. An anchor isn't, he, he says, you know, God doesn't say, oh, you know, hope is a helicopter for the soul. You know, it's not an evacuation helicopter that pulls you out. That's not what God is. He says, actually, in this moment, the best thing for you, and, and it's always re- important to remember, that's why God does this. He says, I'm going to hold you firm because the best thing for you is not just to escape this, it's to grow in this, to stand firm in this, in my strength, and to come through it and see what you will become. You know, uh, the verse in um, in James, you know, perfect, mature, you lacking in nothing. You know, that's what God wants us to get us to. And that's why perseverance is is important and difficult. Yeah, it's true. I mean, you know, the Bible says you will have trials, you know, but I have overcome the world. So in terms of the hope that we have, it's sometimes not just in this situation. It's for eternal life. You know, the hope is that there will be a time when there's no suffering, you know, and there's no pain and there's no difficulties. And and actually, this is the only time, you know, when Millie was talking, there's the only time that you can praise and worship in these difficult times. Yeah. You know, that's the only time we get to do that because in heaven we won't get the opportunity to do that because there won't be any any negative stuff, you know. No, totally. Um, but I think one of the questions I was going to ask, I don't know if there are any questions on the. But guys, keep uh, sending in your questions if you want. You know, this seems to be a good way to interact. So please keep sending your uh, questions on the Facebook comment section. Uh, go on, Simon, you go. You, you. I was going to say, like, how has, how has this, you know, idea that God's in it, the perseverance is the, you know, is the destination. How has that changed your idea of God or what his role is in your life? You know, if it's not to get you to the destination, how has that changed your opinion of God? Because I guess it challenges our, what, what we think his purposes for us are. No. Yeah, I, I think it's it's easy to assume, uh, you know, and I said, oh, it, it isn't God a good, loving God that he just wants us to have, you know, to be okay? And and, and, and I think it reshifts your focus to go, okay, God, um, you, what you want for me is best. And so you're, con- I think for me, it constantly makes me question and recognize and seek within the scripture or spending time with Jesus what is your desired outcome for me? Yeah. You know, uh, we had teaching with Keith Warrington recently and he was talking about the gifts of the spirit and everyone often go, you know, prophecy, you know, uh, healing, all the uh, miracles, all those cool stuff. And he said, what about the gift of martyrdom or the gift of singleness? You know, th- these are like what, what we would think is a yeah. bad life, not finding anyone to spend a life with or even giving your life for something and losing your life. That, that's terrible. That's, that's negative, you know. Uh, but what if God was saying, actually, there is, what I have in store for me is, is greater than what you could ever imagine. Um, and I think that is, that's the challenge for me. And that's how I start to see God now is going, he's so outside society. He's so outside culture. I can't sit there and just assume, oh, he's going to do, he wants to bet exactly what culture wants for me because he doesn't. That's not what's true. Um, so yeah, yeah. Self, back at you. How do you think? I, don't know. I guess it's, I guess the whole aim I guess when Jesus talks about it in the Bible is, you know, that we, we love like Jesus would. You know, he talks so much about loving others and loving others as you would. Instead of loving God and loving your neighbour, that's basically the, if that's the main goal, you know, well, that's, that's what God's going to work on. You know, and you can only become like something if you're close to it. Yeah. You know, I, I you know, when you're like your friends, you start mimicking each other, you start copying, you know, you start saying the same words or you pick up an accent and things. It's like that with God, like the closer you are with God the more you can become like him. And I guess for me, that's been a, I'm very performance oriented. You know, I'm very like, I want to do things, even if it's sport, if it's church, you want to do things and do it well. But sometimes God's interested in what you do. As, like, I love when you said about, you know, God cares more about you than the destination. Yeah. Like God's more interested. In, he doesn't always care about what you do. It's who you are more than, you know, your character. And I think that's changed how I see God, like he's not more pleased with me the more I do, yeah. Or the more money I have, or the better we are as leaders, or the better I am as a husband. He's not more pleased in, you know, doesn't love me more. Or and for me, that's a that's been a big like shift in my idea about God and my mindset, you know. 
Yeah, definitely. Without a shadow of doubt. And I think we are constant. It's that thing of how, what are you feeding yourself? So, I, I, you know, a sheep famously, uh, they, they're given barriers and they are so often found up at the barriers because all they do is they look down, they eat a piece of grass and then they, they just look for the next piece and they just keep going until they hit a barrier. They hit, a, oh, okay, then they have to turn and they just keep going. It's like, actually, what are we feeding ourselves? Are we taking time to look up and see where we are? But ultimately as well, what are we, what are the things that we are allowing to tell us? Oh, there's a piece of food. Oh, there's a piece. Oh, here's what I'm feeding myself. You know, is it what society tells us? Is it what culture says? Is it them going, oh, oh you're, you're nothing because you're, you've not got a promotion in five years. Oh, you're nothing because you keep going for that job. You never get, never get it. Oh, you're nothing because you're, because you don't, you don't, you own, you own in this pay grade or you, you know, and we just keep feeding ourselves this thing and stepping forward and all of a sudden we we like look up and we think, oh, where, where are we? Do you know what I mean? Because we haven't taken a moment to recognize God's desire and God's focus for us is so different, you know, uh, and, and some of us will. There are some fantastic, huge owners who are Christians and they give well into their churches and they serve. And, you know, there are people who are head of businesses or faith and head of politics. And, but God isn't, God isn't, isn't expecting every single Christian to live in that sense. And so actually it's going, God, where do you, where do you want me? Not what location, but what person do you want me to become? And I think that's probably the place to start. And I'll, and I'll hold my hands up in terms of my insecurities. I'm so quick to go, oh, but what does God want me to do within the church? Or what ministries do we have to put on? Or what do we have to put on Facebook? What does it make, how can I make it look like we're doing things which are good? And God's like, why don't you just become a more caring pastor? Or what if I want you to become a more loving husband or more a better a better husband a better father? And and I'm going oh wow! Well, and all of a sudden my mindset is shifted. Do you know what I mean? Because I've looked up and I've chosen not just to take in what the world gives me. I think for me it's so much about mindset, which is a daily struggle. You're not going to succeed today, and and have it for the rest of your life. Something about daily taking it, and you know, you know, perseverance. It, it can be translated as a patient endurance. What a lovely image, a patient endurance, one day at a time, consistently saying, I will grow in this. I will uh, you know, do what, do what I can. Or I, I will grow in this with Jesus. And he doesn't judge me on where I'm going. He judges me on mm. where I'm at, who I am, and, and what I'm doing with the, the things he's given me. You know? Yeah. I feel like even in, in like quarantine now, we can see it. There's so much, we've got so much anxiety and stress and depression and you know, worry and fear because we can't do we can't keep going you know it's not about what we do in this moment because we can't yeah like and and for us i guess that's where we need to, find, we need to sort of know where our purpose is it's not in the job you know as you know max you know our friend max when he when i was in church a few years ago and he said you know he says sometimes the job's not the purpose but there's purpose in the job yeah absolutely you no know, so it's not always about the job it's not always about what you do. It's not about, you know, just doing things or being a better person. It's not always about striving to do that. It's just, I don't know, it's just resting in God's love and letting him shape us, I guess. It's, that's what, for me, it was a challenge. It's like sacrificing ourselves to what God wants us to look like and what God, you know, what his character wants us to be, you know? Yeah, totally. Mate, I, I didn't realise I've got all these comments coming in. I hadn't scrolled down. So we've got a few to discuss. Yeah, let's do it. First of all, I do want to address this. This is Rachel, but it's her husband who's written this. Quick question, Sam. He says... How has someone so average looking as you produced something so beautiful as Betsy? Um, <laughs> I do want to take a little... Oh, here she is. She's got a little headband on now. Oh, oh hello, gorgeous. Mummy's got you changed already. Look. Um, God's grace. Nathan, um, in the sense of perseverance, I will persevere never to talk to you again. Uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> yes, I, I completely agree. She is absolutely beautiful. She takes after her mother. You know, per, you know, lot of changed me. I'm a great guy now. Um, so thank you. <laughs> Nathan, um, Dave Anthony, uh, Mr. Anthony has said, uh, I'm just amazed that in the history of the church, our brothers and sisters have been killed and burned uh, at the stake. Such perseverance can't come just from us. It is the, um, is this, if, sorry, we're, if we have a close relationship with the Holy Spirit comes into play, is this where having a close relationship with the Holy Spirit comes into play? Um, absolutely. I think uh, I was watching something about, you know, proving was Jesus real. Someone said, would people left, right and centre throughout the world die for something that they made up, especially the early church? Would these would these 12 disciples, every single one of them died for their faith? Would every single one of them give their life for something that wasn't fake? And it's like, no, there is something about this 
this this the the realness the honesty the purity of the message of jesus and what he did for us the fact that he first gave himself for us that we say god whatever the distance whatever the stretch i will i will chase after you and i and i will do and i will follow you and i'll be faithful and i think that and and dave absolutely the holy spirit god's spirit living within us is the one that empowers it's oh my gosh she's been sick live on thing <laughs> I wasn't even watching. I was deep in talking. She just vomited all over a new jumper. Right, we're going to go for a quick pit stop. You take the computer up. We'll get back when she's all. T- uh, I can't. I was going to say, yeah, Dave's completely right. You know, the joy is that we don't have to do this in our own strength. You know, if we are struggling, we are trying to persevere. The Holy Spirit helps us. Yeah, it's not yeah. just God saying, "I'm with you." It's I will help you. I will support you. I will strengthen you. Yeah, I'll uphold yeah. you with my right hand. You know, all these things where God says, I'll protect you. I'll comfort you. I'll rescue you. I'll save you. That's all in the Holy Spirit who lives inside us. You know, without that, I honestly don't know where I'd be. Like, you know, every time I get to a difficult situation, the, the comfort in knowing that God's with me and he, he gives me the strength as well as helping me to get through it, that's different. You know, it changes everything. It's massive. You know, there's so many promises in the Bible where he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You know, one of my favorite, Exodus 14, 14, God says, um, I will fight for you. You only have to remain silent. And it's like this thing of, well, even even in, in my brokenness, even when I'm sat alone feeling anxious during lockdown and I feel on my own and I feel like every situation is falling around around me, God says, I'm fighting for you. And you don't even know it, but I'm fighting for you. And I think that verse for me has always been. Uh, yeah, that's no, a big thing if you know, if no, if people don't know Jesus as well. You know, if you don't, if you don't know the Holy Spirit and you listen to you know, yeah, that's that's what God is there for. That's what He longs to have a relationship with us and to help, like a loving Father, to support us, love us, comfort us. You know, all those things that a parent does. That's what He wants to do. Totally, totally. mate. We got loads of questions. I'm gonna jump, just jump back to Julia's about um for the scriptures. The scripture were Hebrews six ten, um and Romans five three. Hebrews six ten. For God is not unjust; He will uh, not forget how hard you have worked for Him and how you have shown your love to Him by caring for other believers as you still do. Uh, I love that, you know, in a section about perseverance, it's talking about loving uh, other believers. There's uh, another verse in the Bible. I'm not sure it is. Sorry. Uh, and it says, um, never, grow, I think it's Galatians, never grow tired of doing good. And it's this thing of perseverance it isn't just perseverance for perseverance sake. What? Well, how can you share others? How can you uh, respect and honor and, and com- show compassion, mercy and grace to others in the perseverance, you know, and, and life will try and beat it out of us. Uh, but but stand and firm and persevere in, in doing good. Um, and the other one was Romans 5.3. Uh, we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us uh, develop endurance. Uh, on that note, Nikki has said, praising and worshipping has always helped me through any trials. Totally yeah. rejoice, celebrate. You know, uh, Paul and, uh, I want to say Timothy, it might be Silas, in prison. Uh, or it might be someone else, and if it is, I apologise. Uh, and they, um, it might be Barnabas, one of those lot. And... Uh, and they just sing and they say, right, we're in the midst of prison. I'm going to sing and the chains break off and the door swings open. And it's like, yeah, when we're in our deepest, darkest moments, worship, the words of worship and the heart action. You might not even know the words to a song. Sing your own song. Just say, sing, thank you. Sing, thank you. Sing something. And, yeah. You know, when it talks about spiritual gifts, it talks about singing spiritual songs over one another. You know, who, who cares if you don't know the words or something? Who knows if you don't know the tune you can't sing? Just get, just allow your spirit to flourish and, and to release your worship to, to God and he receives that um, amazing I think and also it, it takes the um, the view off yourself you know when we're in troubles we start to look down and we start looking at the problem whereas when you worship you then look up and you remind yourself of how powerful God is how loving he is you know it just takes the whole shift off you and your situation just puts it onto God and it sort of gives you that out where you go actually it's not about me I trust you to, to support me, you know, and it just takes it. We stop looking in ourselves and start looking up. Yeah, totally. totally. Um, we got some, um, uh, uh, a quite a, a really honest one. Thank you, Michaela, for sharing this. Um, she said, I have a friend who recently lost her father to COVID-19. She's lost her faith in the Lord. And as anyone grieving blames God for her loss, how can I encourage her and help her get her faith back in the Lord? Um, first of all, I just say that there's no easy answer and there's no blanket answer. Every single person is a human being. Every single person is unique and individual and God loves them for their individuality. He created them in that way. And so um, there's no blanket answer here. Um, What I would say is compassion, root one. 
uh, just be with them where they can, yeah. um, uh, encourage, uh, you know, support them in, you know, practically in a way that you can. Um, I, uh, when, when, when you either struggling with faith or you don't have faith, the idea of um, a loving God who allows both good and bad things to happen to the good and the bad um, can be confusing. Uh, Proverbs talks about a verse that says, you know, good things will happen to the good and they will happen to the bad. Bad things will happen to the bad and they will happen to the good. You know, ultimately, we, we don't allow this. I think it comes down to God's sort of um, willingness for us to have free will. He says, look, I, I put you here. You have a choice and you and, and life will happen and it is a difficult and painful road um but he also says that he will uh he will turn uh our mourning into dancing he tells us that he will use uh, uh use our story for good and so i think there is um in the immediate aftermath there's no right answer and and to that person who's struggling and to anyone who's lost someone um i'm so sorry uh, and i don't have answers as you can tell me fumbling about looking for an answer here I don't have an answer, but I have experienced uh, the love of God. You know, I lost my grandpa recently to dementia. And of course, it raises all these questions. OK, God, why didn't you heal him? Why did you let him go on for four years? Just slowly forgetting who people were. It was a horrible time. And yet I have a faith that Jesus had a plan. It brought family, our family together. You know, there are so many things outside just his life that change. And although that doesn't completely help, um, uh, that God is always faithful to do to bring good from from the bad he is a bringer of every good and perfect gift that's what the bible tells us and so um it's a difficult one simon do you want to jump in there on, on anything yeah i think we have to, i think it's encouraging us to hold fast to the fact that god is good yeah. you know, and the evil things don't come from him you know god jesus said i came to give life and life to the full you know, and the enemy comes to steal kill and destroy and you know coronavirus you can't, it's easy to fall into the trap of saying, you know, oh yeah, God's allowing it to use it. But I don't think that would be true. I don't think a loving father would necessarily allow a child to go through pain to teach them something. You know, I don't know how, I don't know if my, I don't know if that's personal view. I don't know if my mind of how, what God's like, you know, he is good, he's loving, he's kind. And it does throw up those questions that we in ourselves we can't answer. We can't, I don't know why, you know, and they are mysteries that we will never know. And I think we'd be doing God an injustice if we tried to give a really good answer. I don't think there will be one, yeah. which really doesn't help sometimes. But I think Sam's right in terms of, of supporting and loving and just being there. Let's just be Jesus. If we don't know how to explain it, let's just try and love him as you can. Yeah. And hopefully God's powerful enough and loving enough to show himself in other ways. Yeah. And I think as our faith grows, and I think I won't preach on this soon, so I won't go into it. To do to, 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 to use all your spoilers, yeah, I know too much spoiler, but um, there is uh, there's a few like even if verses in the Bible, and it's where people say, you know, I believe God will heal or I believe God will save us, but even if He doesn't, I will have faith in Him. You know, uh, Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego, these three people in the Old Testament, they're about to be thrown in a furnace because they don't bow down before this other king because they, they say we'll only bow down to Jesus. And they say, we believe that the God of our ancestors will save us. But even if he doesn't, we will never bow down to you. And it's this, and in that essence, it's that perseverance that says, as I get to know God and his loving nature, I grow in my ability and my strength to say, do you know what? I believe your God is good enough to save me from this. But he, if he doesn't, I believe he will work through it and still do something miraculous. And in the depths of despair, he will be with me. And whether I'm on a mountaintop or a valley, he is there. He is faithful. Um, so yeah so hopefully uh, that is so enlightened you in some way and i would say just i think the easiest way for the enemy to lie to us is that about god's goodness yeah. and when bad things happen i think he attacks that god is god good yeah. did god really yeah. say protect you did god really say he'd support you and heal that or, and i think that lie comes in easily and i think when we're struggling we allow that lie you know just to create a bit of weight and heaviness in it and i think we just need to hold on to that idea that God is good and remind ourselves that he is. I think it easily changes otherwise, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, in the Genesis story, the, uh, Satan doesn't tell Adam and Eve. Uh, he asks them questions. Did God really say that? Did, yeah. did he say the fruit? And I think that's what the enemy does to us today. He asks questions. Oh, did did God really say he'd be with you? Because it doesn't feel like he is now. And, and actually, that's where the, the truth of the gospel comes in. Um, 
We've got a long one. I'm going to stick it on the screen here. It's from Martin. Hello, Martin. Wonderful person. Uh, As a control freak, my natural default is to try and find my own way through difficult times and then turn to God when that doesn't work out, making him a last resort. I've had to learn and relearn over the years to go to him first and then, as it says in Psalm 46, be still and trust in him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And um, be still and know that I am God. It, you know, Psalm 46, verse 10. Uh, she's back. She's clean. She's back. <laughs> New gear. A quick change. New gear. No idea. Um, Second out the change of the day. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I think that's really good. You know, our natural tendencies will, will always come into it. Whether you're a control freak, sometimes it can be more difficult to say, yeah. okay, God, hey, whatever, you know, I, I, I trust in you. Um, but there is um, there is power in that. And I think it's just that coming back, just exactly what Martin said, coming back to him first in worship and praise, studying your Bible, being in a church community, you know, because all those people and all, all those things encourage you and remind you of the truth that uh, that that he is faithful. And, and actually what I found is what I'm going through is pretty much 100% what someone has already been through. Sometimes when we spend time on our own, we say, oh, I'm the only one that's ever going through this. I'm all on my own, can't do this, but, you know, I'm lost. And yet, go to a church community and go, oh, you've been through that. Oh, you've had someone die, a loved one die. Oh, you've struggled with ill health. Oh, you've gone through divorce. Oh, you've gone... And all of a sudden, you're in a community of people who are journeying, all believing in the same God, but all addressing him to different situations and still seeing his goodness and his faithfulness. You know, and the church community for, for thousands of years have done the same. And I think that is a solid foundation to go, do you know what? I am not alone. And not only is God with me, but I have a group of people. And that's why it's, uh, who are doing this with me. And that's why it's so important to be in a church community. Yeah. And I agree. I completely relate to Martin in terms of control. And I think what I learned was I was trying to control an area that I didn't trust God in. Yeah. And if, you know, if we're in a situation where, we don't necessarily trust God in that area, maybe with our health or with a job, or we start to control it because we don't trust God to do it himself. Yeah, so I would find I always try to control situations and control things, and, and that causes anxiety and pressures and stresses that God doesn't want us to have, and we take on ourselves yeah. trying to fix things and trying to find a solution ourselves, and that really causes stress, and it did for me, anxiety, trying to, trying to do things in my own strength and with my own wisdom, and, yeah. because it's not trusting God that he's good, to come through with his promises, you know, he's promised me that. And then I, I forget his word and I try and do it myself. Totally. So it's trust God, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I think someone's like really simply but said that anxiety is uh, trying to control something that's out of your control. Do you know what I mean? That that is, or thinking about something that is out of your control. That's all anxiety is. You know, it's just this desperation to try and take back control of something you, you don't have control over. And so I think it's really important. Mate, we're going to have to speed through. We've got loads of questions and comments coming in. That's awesome. Let me get well, It'll be- oh. uh, uh, t- Kath says it's timely for her. Really needed to hear to confirm what what growth feels like in these uh, times and these lessons. Kath, that's awesome. So glad that is spoken yeah. to you. Uh, questions: Why is Sam's house so pink? Uh, into the Cannon Valley Church page. I think it's Laura. I'm sure he's pinched the lights from church. That uh, can be. <laughs> I've pinched the the long strip light and the single beam. Absolutely. <laughs> Makes everything feel nice and more colourful. I have to get all the lights off, and I just turn the nice pink lights on, and I work in a very pink room. That's <laughs> just who I am. Get over it. That was a deep question. That was a deep one. That one. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was Silas. It was Silas in prison. Thank you, Dave and Paul. Thank you. Um, great to see you, Granville. Uh, many of you in the church family know Granville uh, from many years ago. Great to see you. Thanks for for tuning in. Um, great. 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 Fantastic. It looks like uh, um, it looks like this has been helpful for a lot of you. That's fantastic. Um, yeah, I think it's useful to get feedback when it's Sam after this. If it's useful for us to carry on doing it, you know, we don't want to do it if it's not useful. Really. Totally, totally. And I think we, you know we'll, we'll probably end on that. Perseverance is um, because I think uh, you know Julia here has said um, it is much less stressful if we let God take control. You know, t- going on what you just said there, Simon. I think it's really important to say perseverance is not taking control. It's not taking a grip of things and going, right, now I'm going to push through and I'm going to make sure I get what done what I want. Actually, perseverance is going, is a letting go. Um, it's a letting go of the control. It's a letting go of the things you, you wish or you, you want. And you go, actually, God, I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to have a patient endurance uh, in this time, whatever, whatever come may. 
come what may. That's the phrase. <laughs> whatever come may. Whatever come may. No, um, definitely. That's good. And I think actually, uh, I don't want us going away going, right, I'm now going to persevere because that's the, that's the opposite of the gospel. Yeah, it's not trying hard, isn't it? That's yeah. the, you see loads of motivational quotes out they aren't a Christian. It's just try hard. You, know, you you do the best you can and everything will be great. And it's just, it's not in our own strength. And no, that just causes no, burnout. No, it, you know, even to this point, you know, he talks so much about our own lives. The Bible talks so much about our own lives and handing it over to, uh, to him. You know, great images like, you know, trying to take control of your life is like gripping a, a, a bunch of sand. The, the tighter you grip, the more it slips out of your grasp. Um, yes. You know, and it just, it just doesn't work. But also a good example for you guys is that, God says that Jesus is building his church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So even in my job, guys, in every aspect of life, you might even think, oh, the church, we can work hard for the church because that's God's thing. No, no, no. Yeah. That's where, even in that essence, I've got to let go and say, God, you're building a church. I can't do it. I'm just a bloke in, in three three colors of blue. Do you know what I mean? In a pink room. Do you know what I mean? It's blue. I'm, that, that's what I'm doing, you know. And so... Um, yeah, you know, for me, that, that it's all about that letting go. And, and guys, if you are a young Christian or you haven't let go before, it's okay for it to find it difficult, but step in in faith. Step in and do it. Say to Jesus, okay, God, I don't know where, where I'm going to get a job. What do you have for me? That's how I ended up at Conor Valley Church, and thank Jesus that I did. You know, actually, when you say, God, I'm letting go of control, you are, and you actually open your boundaries. When we have control, we have such a narrow view of where we want to go. When we let go of control and um, we say, right, I'm just going to persevere, but I'm going to, God, it's over to you. Um, yeah, it's good. More that can happen. I remember one uh, w- one point, I remember when before I got the job at Conor Valley Church, someone said, I was asking someone about what am I going to do? I don't know my path. I don't know what God has for me. And he says, is God's plan a tightrope or a field? Is it this one specific, really thin thing that he wants you to stay on and you have to persevere and keep going and work and work and work and if you fall off, you've missed it? Or is it a field where he says, Go and play. Go and have fun. Go and enjoy. Stay yep. with boundaries, but go and enjoy. And I, I think for us, that's what uh, we need to focus on is actually this tight thing. Sometimes God will be really specific about what he wants us to do, where he wants us to go. But usually he says, here are the boundaries, the gospel, the Bible, loving one another, you know, loving uh, God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength and loving others as yourself. And then other things as well. And then, and then, but then go, go play, go and do what I've gifted you to do. And I think for me, yeah. that releases as well as with perseverance. It's like, go, I'm just going to keep going. And if things go wrong, I'm still within your boundaries. I'm still having fun. You still love me. I'm going to keep on going. And so, whatever that difficult situation is, get others around you for encouragement and support. Get within a church community. Pray and worship. And the first thing, first thing, go back to Jesus. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in worship. If you don't have the words, just sing out to Him. Uh, you know, let go of control. Uh, and, you know, patient endurance. It's not about. It's not a sprint. You're not plowing through to get where God wants to get to. It's a patient endurance. You're Mo Farah. You're not Usain Bolt. Okay. Uh, in a quiz uh, in one of my family's quizzes last week, uh, Nia got them mixed up. There was a picture of Usain Bolt. She went, "That's Mo, Mo Farah." That is. <laughs> Sorry for you there. A um, couple more. Then. We're gonna. We'll, we'll we'll close this down. But it's great. We're still getting a few comments coming in. Michelle has said, "I love be still and know that I'm God." Being in lockdown has made me embrace being still and trusting in God and made me realise that I don't have to be a million miles an hour and handling everything and handing everything over to God and trusting in him uh, at this time as I couldn't have got through this without him. And maybe, I mean, you know, if that could sum up, you know, we've probably spoken for 40 minutes and Michelle <laughs> four lines there. I'm, I'm going to stick that on screen because that's just amazing. Um, I Be still and know that I'm God. You know, in the heart of this... Um, and, and, and finally, I will just say on that, be still is a great thing. You can persevere by staying still. You can persevere in your situation, not by running out and doing things and yeah. being active. You can persevere by remaining steadfast where you are, handing it over to Jesus, not rushing, not trying to do everything, but just saying, God, I'm going to persevere in this moment. I'm going to stand and I'm going to be firm. Whether that's I'm just going to spend time in prayer, or I'm just going to go for a walk and I'm just going to, let it go to you. I'm not going to try and f- complete everything that's on my to-do list. I'm going to be still and know that you are God and you're in control. I think that's amazing. Perseverance doesn't always mean motion, it mean, but it does mean an endurance. Come on. That's great. Uh, Simon, uh, I think that's good. I think we've, we've come to the end there. That is... Uh, Love it. That's uh, good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for, for, for commenting. I hope that was 
are helpful. We still have 23 people watching live, so that's clearly not everyone's left me. I've just been talking about love. It's always positive. Um, guys, thank you so much. What's that? And feedback is much appreciated. Yeah, guys, we really appreciate it. Anything, any feedback, any encouragement, or any more questions, we'll get back to you in the middle. Yeah. Uh, should we just pray just to close this session? Should we do it? Uh, Father, I just want to thank you so much uh, that you are faithful and true, that your promises remain. God, that we know uh, that uh, we don't have to control things. We can hand over control to you. And God, we say that as we do that, we will, we will simply persevere. We will have a patient endurance that no matter what life throws at us, we will stand firm in you, knowing that so many people have had so much worse than us. People have died for their faith. So God, would you give us a perspective? Remind yeah. us of where we are. Remind us of what you're doing. Remind us that you're in control. And Lord, would you just fill us with a patient endurance and a patient perseverance? Um, thank you so much. Bless one another. Keep us safe. Thank you so much for the NHS staff, the care workers, the delivery drivers that are still working at this time. And keep yeah running bless them bless our government to make wise decisions uh we we, we but ultimately we know that you are in control yeah in name we pray amen amen thanks sam guy so let me end with a line from the amazing film evan almighty uh towards the end of the film uh the lady has prayed a prayer and morgan freeman who is god not actually god i don't think so anyway uh and he uh, <laughs> he he says he says if someone Praise for patience. Does God give them patience or does he give them an opportunity to be patient? And I think in this moment, as we pray for perseverance, let's not just assume God's, you know, God has given it to us. But how is he going to prove it to you? He's going to prove it to you by giving you an opportunity to persevere. So if you face trials, if you face hardships in this moment, don't think, oh, it's all coming, coming down. Don't think it's all coming down around me. You know, it, this is terrible. Go, OK, Jesus, I recognize this opportunity to persevere to grow in my perseverance, to grow in my patient endurance, so that I would be mature, perfect, and needing nothing. Uh, Simon, thank you so much, mate. Thanks for tuning in. It's my pleasure. I'll see you soon. Yes, I'll see you soon. Guys, uh, keep it keep... Oh, a little notice for you. Thank you so much if you mm, mm, do the dance. Mm, Mike says do the dance from the film, everybody. Um, open spaces on Monday. We're moving that back from three to four. And it's now going to be two to three. That's just for this week. It's because I've got a Zoom meeting that I've got to be in at three. So from two to three, open spaces will be happening on Zoom. Check your uh, check the Cunnan Valley Church page, the Facebook page. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you have anything else, let us know. We'd love to get the support of you. Uh, is there anything else? I don't think there is, mate. They're all good. And if you loved it so much, watch it all back and enjoy it again. <laughs> Simon, mate, great to see you. No worries. We'll see you soon. Guys, have a great day. Bless you. We'll see you soon.